All right, so we are losing the light quickly, so we'll see how good the lighting is in this video as the sun goes down. I am incredibly, incredibly excited. The next three videos, so this is the first video in a series of four that I've been like filming, preparing for, editing all of this stuff over the last couple of months. It started in August when I was on my first round of cephalaxin. I'm now continuing it on my second experiment of cephalaxin, which you can read about in other videos. Read about, you can watch in other videos. So this series is kind of minimalism. It's under consumption. I read this whole article about this trend of under consumption, under consumption core, which I never heard of before, so I wanted to read a little bit from that article and share the knowledge that I was really inspired by and then of course just minimalism living a more minimalistic life which has been this like ongoing journey for me so in this series I basically try to go through everything in my room not only that really focusing in on clothes so I'll have a whole vlog on clothes and then kind of finishing up my room and just everything I've learned like from this experience so in this first vlog I wanted to talk about under consumption minimalism what all of those things really mean to me because I never heard of underconsumption and so let me read you kind of what this article said that the trend is about. <laughs> First of all, this article talks a lot about our consumption culture. Capitalism, consumerism, being on social media and influencers are talking about all the things that they're buying, they're purchasing, that they want, that they need, that you need, that you want. I really wanna focus, one, if I do buy something, to buy it from a store that is sustainable, high quality, a small business, etc. But then two, to really love what I have and not buy into, I need, 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 need to be happy and actually just find joy in the things that I own. So that's basically what the underconsumption kind of core is. And I'll link this article down below so you can read the whole article if you want. I loved this article. I learned so much from this article. So it's basically urging us to find joy and purpose in using what we have. So repairing something that might be broken that we have to be able to use it longer and buying only what we truly need, which I think is such an important message first of all it helps you save money because you're not buying stuff all the time that you don't need it helps the environment and the planet because you're not buying stuff you don't need and then fall out of love with or you accumulate in your home so you're living a more minimalistic life there's like so many reasons to embrace this journey i mean this is something that i am still dealing with and still trying to figure out so like for example this hoodie it is just a plain gray hoodie i really wanted an oversized hoodie it's a little oversized but not as oversized as I actually wanted. And I got this one secondhand, so I bought it at Plato's Closet, which is like a local reuse place. But actually, I just, I don't really like how it, I just don't really like it. I can't even put in words. I'm trying to find all these reasons why I don't like it, but I just don't really like it. I bought it for like five bucks. So I think I'm gonna donate it, and I have other hoodies, not all of them are oversized, but they're about the same, same oversized. So like, I'm just gonna use my other ones. And the problem is that I was gonna use this one like for home, so my dad and I were working on making a wooden blanket chest lid for my blanket chest that I, made probably a decade ago and never made a lid for and so like we were sawing and like dust was going everywhere and i was like oh okay like i don't love this hoodie so like i'll use it it was just sawdust like i could wear one of my other hoodies and just wash it like it's not like it's gonna get stained or anything so honestly like this whole kind of thing has been a mindset shift for me and trying to just really focus in on the things that I do own. So like here at the apartment, I pretty much have out everything I own. So let me give you an example. So over here, this is pretty much all I have here at the apartment. This whole top thing here is clothes. I have some puzzles here. I have a backpack right here. Games are over here. <laughs> well, it's hard to point. The bottom row are shoes, which you can't even see, but like that's what I have here at the apartment. And so like that's the focus for me, which I love is I want to just have the bare minimum of what I need. So it's focusing on abundance. It's not being like you need to deprive yourself of things. It's really focusing in on what you need and what you already have, which I absolutely love. It does 
bother me when youtubers i watch are like doing these like hauls of like all this stuff that they just bought and it's like don't you like already have a lot of what you need and it's just all of this consumption and so i was almost thinking of doing like a little series on like showcasing what i already have i'm not gonna do it. this series is gonna be what it is but, like in the future like showcasing what i already have and what i love and the small businesses that i bought from to support this is just such an interesting topic for me and i'm really passionate about it because it merges a bunch of stuff like i mentioned it merges minimalism so just the act of having less clutter i feel so much less burdened by stuff like even i'm going through my phone you know i'm getting rid of like old pictures i'm getting rid of old notes i'm consolidating i'm finding stuff which is fun so it mixes kind of minimalism together along with sustainability so just consuming less for the environment, supporting local businesses, which I'm super passionate about. Like it just brings together so many of my favorite topics in this like underconsumption trend, which I guess was trending this summer. I haven't heard of it at all, but the reason I'm using this like trend as the lens is because it kind of puts into words all the things that I really, really like. I really like in this article because they talk about how easy it is to impulse buy. For example, you know, like PayPal and checkout. It's so easy to buy stuff. You don't have to put your information in anymore, but they really say like letting this habit go unchecked can lead to clutter waste and a chronic feeling of dissatisfaction which I totally agree but I think another important thing is talking about how hard this is like it is so much work to go through every single thing you own and be like do I really need this does it bring me joy they talk about personal introspection and accountability is the hardest part it's a lifelong journey which I'm finding we have to constantly check back in with ourselves examine our priorities and current circumstances and try to stay on track also sorry I know I'm chewing gum but I've been really nauseous today so don't want to throw up on you so I think that that is so important too to acknowledge like yeah this is hard it takes a lot of brain capacity to like go through each thing there's a lot of hard decisions but I would say the longer you do it the easier it does become the harder part is then you get down to the stuff that you own is like your childhood things things that might have memories attached to it but it's not saying like you have to get rid of everything it's just really focusing in on the things that do give you the most joy so for example like I was just going through my stuffed animals at home and one of them was like this wool you know cat that had been made out of a recycled sweater but the moths were kind of getting into it and I was just like, oh, that's sad. I probably could patch it up, but it didn't give me joy anymore anyway. And a couple other ones as well, like just didn't give me joy. And I love stuffed animals. So I only want to keep the ones that like truly make me happy. And then two of the stuffed animals actually made me so happy and gave me so much joy that I like brought them out where I could see them every day all day in a more prominent location which i thought was really cool so it's kind of spotlighting the stuff that brings us the most joy as well i love what she wrote in the end here isn't that the ultimate aspiration finding inspiration and appreciation in the small details of our lives i love that because i've had to slow down so much with my health crisis and everything that's been going on with that that it's been you know, I've had to really focus on like what surrounds me, what brings me joy that isn't work, that isn't stuff like that because I can't physically do that. I think that beautiful, like slow, simple life that she talks about in this article and enjoying the things that you have and that you're surrounded by and that you engage with in your everyday life, that's a really cool thought. So I wrote down in my own words, I wanna find contentment and appreciation for everything I already own and actually use it all. And if I don't appreciate something or use it, then I want to pass it on to someone who will that's my goal so that's been a big part because I like to think that each like item has this little soul it's like a Marie Kondo theory or like idea that she uses it's little soul is sad if you're not loving it and constantly using it and so I want to pass that on then to someone who will love it or constantly use it so that it's little soul is happy these are some ways from the article that encourage you to kind of embrace this trend of under consumption so one is celebrating wear or tear which this was a complete mindset shift to me. I was like, oh my gosh, if something looks worn, I need, you know, something new. But actually, they're saying like instead of hiding like your scuffs on your shoes or patches on clothing, under consumption advocates proudly showcase these imperfections, badges of honor. The 
trend emphasizes fixing and taking care of your items, especially clothes, so they will last longer, perhaps even a whole lifetime, which is so cool to think about and really makes you be like, do I want this piece of clothing for the rest of my life? Am I gonna love it forever? Then I would buy it, and if not, if it's just like a trend or a passing impulse buy, then no. <laughs> the next tip they had was make all purchases intentional. So when new items are needed, under consumption enthusiasts prioritize quality, durability, versatility. I never really think about the versatility part. <laughs> So I think that that's important too. They're not afraid to invest in pieces that will last, even if it means saving up for longer, which is so true with fast fashion. I think it's like the average fast fashion t-shirt you can wear like five times before it starts falling apart or something. Whereas like really sustainable pieces of clothing, you can wear for like 30 times. So actually, if you do the math, it is less expensive to buy the more sustainable thing because it's more durable and will last you longer. So that's something to think about. <laughs> they even talk about that in this article, the concept of cost per wear. I did a lot of research for that with my social venture upcycle design. Like we actually did the math on a lot of that stuff and it was over time cheaper to invest in sustainable stuff that you can wear like possibly for your lifetime. Next tip was celebrating individuality. The pressure to consume in order to experience group belonging is a big driver of overconsumption, which I totally get. Like in high school, in college, you just want to, you know, wear fashionable things so that you're not looked at as odd or whatever. But like now that I'm like much older, <laughs> I just honestly don't care. I want to be happy. If someone judges me based on my clothes. Like honestly, it's probably not someone I want to hang out with. <laughs> and then their next tip was put sustainability first. First, which is why I love this trend so much, in an age where the effects of climate change are becoming increasingly apparent, underconsumption offers a tangible way for individuals to reduce their environmental footprint. By considering the impact of what we buy, we also start to consider ethical questions like who made this item and how much were they paid, which I think is super important. I try to buy stuff made in America as well, where in general, a small American-made business is probably one of your best bets. Also then the environmental footprint on the earth is a lot less because it hasn't gone all the way around the world. <laughs> underconsumption normalizes and exactly where stuff comes from, letting that guide our decision to purchase. This is a cool thing to end on. Underconsumption asks us to look inward, to find meaning, and to challenge our motivations for buying new. It is a mindset and a lifestyle shift that won't happen overnight. Again, going back to like how difficult this is, but how worthwhile it is for so many reasons. It's important to remember that underconsumption isn't about deprivation, but abundance. The abundance of time when we're not constantly shopping or working to find our next purchase. The abundance of connection when we focus on experiences and relationships rather than things, and also an abundance of hope. A reminder that we have the power to shape our lives and our world through daily choices. I just thought this article was so cool. So once again, I will link it below. Come here, baby. Baby keeps wanting to be in this vlog. She also keeps trying to eat my, my food, my dinner behind the, oh, look at her cute little face. Mm. She's like, stop it, mommy. You're embarrassing me. I'm just a baby. Anyway, thank you for listening. This is like the intro to a four part series. So we have three more videos coming up, trying to organize stuff. I mean, it's been a really interesting journey. I think some of the really interesting parts I didn't even know were gonna happen. Like I'll talk a lot about body image in two vlogs from now. And I'm really excited to bring you all along with me. So let me know what your thoughts are on underconsumption. If you have tips or tricks for how to live a more minimalistic, sustainably focused, just all of the things that I talked about today. Like those are super aspirational for me because like they said in the, in the article, it is a lifelong journey. So it's not gonna happen overnight and that's okay. No one is perfect, but it's a good thing to inspire us to try living a more conscious lifestyle. So it's been super fun. And so I'm really excited to bring you all along on the journey. I hope you enjoyed the video and I can't wait to hear what you think of the rest of this series. So let's get started. Stay tuned next week for the next, next video. Bye friends.